Who wants to go first? America's team? Absolutely. <laughs> of course. Of course. All right. So I got the Cowboys. Uh, we're coming in this this year with a nine and a half win total for the Cowboys. So when we're at the end of this thing, we'll decide whether or not that's an over under uh, for the wins of the Cowboys. But last season, uh, 12 and five with Dak missing five games with the broken finger. Obviously, the big news of the offseason for them, I think, is the loss of Kellen Moore could be potentially a big blow. Uh, 467 points at the third most in the league from a Kellen Moore uh, called offense 11th in yards per game, 7th in rush attempts per game, ninth in offensive plays per game. A lot of those offensive categories feel fared fairly well uh, for the Dallas Cowboys over the last few years. Now, this year, we're going to get Big Mac calling the plays here. Old uh, McCarthy getting the play sheet back out, looking channeling his inner, inner Andy Reid there. And they're calling this offense the Texas Coast, uh, as opposed to uh, McCarthy's a big West Coast guy. So they're going to keep a lot of what Kellen Moore was doing, incorporate that stuff, because if it wasn't broke why fix it their quote but also it's been a collaborative effort with Dak and the receivers and the running backs of kind of what they like what they're comfortable with modifying things so um, just trying to keep it keep it the same but making everybody even a little bit more comfortable in the things that they like and don't like um, so they were ninth in offensive plays per game last year and a lot of them were talking about hey we might even be wanting to go a little faster this year so we're looking to be maybe in the top five of play so Something interesting from the Cowboys there is, you know, if you're getting more plays, the offensive players, uh, potentially more action. So uh, that's a that's a positive thing uh, if we're talking about Cowboys offense. There could be some negativity there. Let's see what you guys think about, about Dak Prescott moving forward. Uh, Sands, Kellen Moore here. Uh, he was QB 18 last year, 213 fantasy points, according to Fantasy Pros, QB 18, 17.8. Uh, points per game that's good for 15th in the ffd adp he is 2.7 that is super flex uh tight end premium uh qb 11 anybody necessarily in or out on dak prescott uh moving into the 23 season here i thought it was interesting that he did lead the nfl in interceptions last year and missed a handful of games um <laughs> that, that dude that was crazy I, yeah uh, yeah so he was he was out until week seven, came back versus the Lions. And then from, from week 10 to week 18, uh, he was decent, still number one in turnovers in that time uh, from, from 10 to 18. And I went 10 to 18 because I gave him a couple more weeks to get that uh, thumb right. So I wanted to see kind of what that was after he came back and was maybe a little closer to healthy. But fifth in yards there, tied for first in touchdowns. So was, you know, getting you some scoring some points and moving the ball around fifth and fifth and yards uh fifth and attempts and then again first and turnovers uh so you know kind of best of both worlds there was definitely shaping up to be a little better but still turning the ball over at a high clip the cowboys didn't seem like they were super concerned with it but they think they can get that number down Dak uh worth the two seven for you um in a in a super flex startup is that should it be going earlier? Should it be going later? Um, some guys around Dak are uh, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Jonathan Taylor, Kyler Murray, Waddle, Christian McCaffrey, St. Brown. Any thoughts on uh, your feelings of Dak in the in the second round there? Uh, Brees Hall, JT, those are two players I absolutely want over Dak. Um, you know, Dak, Dak's fine. He's a gunslinger. He is what he is. He's not necessarily... I know he had like, what do you have a QB two finish of two, three years ago? I don't think he's a game changer, man. I think there's better quarterbacks. I think there's better dynasty assets. I think there's better players out there and JT and uh, Brees Hall, like you just mentioned, like those are two guys that I absolutely would feel significant, significantly more comfortable. I believe they would be, they would give me a lot better chance at winning. Now I get that their life, uh, their shelf life is significantly shorter because they're running backs. But at the end of the day, man, you know, we play to win. We, we want to win now, you know, like, I love I love getting those top tier running backs, right? Those are literally two of the top three dynasty running back assets. The only other that we didn't name is uh, what Bijan Robinson. Bijan, and then Christian yep. McCaffrey is at two ten yeah. for us. So Christian yeah. McCaffrey or yeah. Dak Prescott? Oof, honestly, dude, I feel like you almost got to I might I might lean Dak there, man. Uh, it it oh God, that's a tough one, man. It doesn't feel right, but I think if we look back two three years from now, I think it would be the right decision. Big D, Dak's kind of interesting. I, he anchors a lot of uh, a lot of lineups for that QB two spot, so I can understand the concept behind it. But I think in like in our FFD ADP, I think I'd rather have Kyler Murray over him because yeah. just because of the upside um, piece of it. 
Um, I definitely agree with the running back take. I mean, you know, um, I, I think the shelf life for Dak may be similar to, <laughs> to the shelf life for, for some of those young guys like Grease Hall and that. Um, you know, um, already about he'll be 30 in the season. Yeah. Probably going to so, get an extension here soon, though. Mm, we'll see. No, that's in question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, the way that he, I don't know, the way that he plays his game, I, I just. I have a hard time seeing him extending his shelf life like a, like a Rogers or a Cousins or anything like that. So I think prime, quote unquote, prime years, right, are kind of like now till the next couple years, three years. And so I could definitely see taking the running backs in that in that spot from a from a build build perspective anyway. Big Co is furious right now. Listen to this. He's the biggest Dak lover uh, out of the FFD circle here. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I'm, go ahead. I want to go in for Dak I think I mean it's not fun you know there's been some injuries I'm not ready to just say that that's going to continue on I mean I think he has dialed back the running and I think some of that stuff's been kind of freak kind of accidents like what's shit like this is going to happen hurt week one against the Bucks is definitely to break your throwing I believe it was the right thumb um yeah what's my man supposed to do and they came back played pretty well like he's got one of the best young receivers in the game we'll get into the offensive line and the rest of this conversation but I mean he's QB 11 you want to take Kyler Murray because he's at least five years younger well it's just every time Kyler line. Murray's come onto the field he's he's been a sure like a QB in QB one but range I, if he I plays like there's sure mm-hmm. and Dak like you said a, a QB two basically but one of the better QB twos that you can have and if, and that's the decision you're making when you get into the second round do I want to take one of these elite young running backs or do I want to gamble a little bit on Dak Prescott which I think is a gamble on the running backs too like He's America's Kirk Cousins, right? I mean, that's and, really. And I think he, I, what, what I've heard is that he's going to get extended. So I mean, if if he's a starting quarterback for the Cowboys, then you know you're going to deal with the injury risk with anyone. I'm not ready to pin it on him for the rest of his career. I think he's. I think it's a fine play. I think. I think it's fine. Yeah, I got. A, I got ahead. a question for y'all. Go ahead. Does it bother you guys that Dak's heading into year eight and he has one season with over thirty passing touchdowns? Is is that a concern? Nah, I, I don't think for the cost of for him to be your QB2 I don't think it's that much of a concern I don't you know I, I don't want him to be my QB1 necessarily but if he could be my QB2 I'm fine with it but I I do find myself skipping over Dak a lot yeah. um so but what I, if you took Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase in the first round then I want Kyler Murray and Kyler Murray's gone you gonna pass over Dak for someone I'll, else? I'll, I'll take Dak at the end if, I, right. if I'm near the end of the second round tacks. yeah well, but you don't have to draft two quarterbacks right out of the gate. Well, right? sure. They're I mean, they're, but that's a, you, we can't. Right? We don't have time for that right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> you say you can't, Big D. You don't have I to. Say you, you don't have to. You don't. In, I, in I'm world, fine with that. No, not necessarily. But if I can get two good ones, and, <laughs> if and I got, Dak, I, can't, I have a hard time not taking Dak in the late second round. If I got to the third and Tua was my first quarterback, I'm fine with that. Like you know, as opposed to skipping. You're fine a, with Tua being your first quarterback. Yeah, I'm, I put. You know, we would you be selling? This. Uh, Dak to get I no, I don't think I would necessarily be going that Dak, route. I would hold be, Dak if you have, him right I would, now. but I would be fine with going from Dak to Daniel Jones. Um, because like you said, I think the fact that we are now missing a little bit of that scramble ability, and he did up it a little bit in this last year, but since that fracture, we haven't seen it, which is some of what gave you know the week to week variance uh, a little bit of better floor, uh, potentially there. And I would, I'd be fine with throttling down from. Dak to Daniel Jones in a, in a trade though, so that that would be. And I know Big D, you're all over that. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Any Talk any thoughts language. on Dak before we get out of here? Move to the next thing. All right, so let's let's hit that O line real quick and talk about the guys who are holding up Dak. Um, this is the PFF had him finish at the twelfth uh, overall offensive line and projected as the sixth. So uh, high aspirations here. We have Tyron Smith, obviously the left tackle. Tyler Smith, the left guard. Biotish as the center. Zach Martin as the guard. So r- those four rock solid. Um, and then Terrence Steele as the right tackle. So a really good line all the way across. But Tyron Smith has missed 33 games in the last uh, three seasons. Uh, they're saying Steele was hurt at the end of last season, the right tackle. He, he may, they're saying he could be ready, but he's still not right. Um, so they're not sure. So right off the rip, we have Tyron Smith, who's missed a big chunk of time. We're missing, we're missing Steele. We know Martin's missed some time. We got, if it's healthy, it's good. We missed some time last year, and they were still a pretty good offensive line. Um, but, 
you know, right off the rip, we could be missing steel. And if we're missing steel, then it seems like Tyler Smith, who filled in for Tyron, who's played left tackle last year for Tyron Smith, could slide over to the right tackle position and then they'd jumble some guards around. I don't I don't think it's a terribly uh, deep offensive line room. They did draft a Seam Richards at a UNC who was the left tackle, but he was a tight end and a, and a D end at Haverford and signed to UNC a little late in his career and converted the left tackle. So he's a little raw at kind of what he's doing, but very athletic. And then there's some other pieces around there that have had had played, but over some of these other offensive lines that we've gone over, this one doesn't seem quite as deep, but, but very good uh, through the starting five here. So uh, let's, let's use that to pivot into um, Shit. what <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> to pivot into Tony Pollard. Um, what do you guys what do you guys think about old Tony Pollard? This is this is a good this is like I said, projected a good offensive line. If they're healthy, they're good. If they're missing a piece or two, they're probably still fine. We have Zeke who is not no longer on the team. He had two hundred and fifty four attempts, twelve touchdowns, and nine hundred and twenty nine yards in this Dallas offense last year. And Pollard came in with two hundred and fourteen attempts, nine touchdowns, and eleven hundred and six yards. Um, so, you know, we are missing a good chunk of those Zeke carries. And now we're, we're on to Pollard, who was RB8 last year, 248.8 points, 15.6 points per game. Uh, that's RB9 in the points per game. PFF had him at RB4 uh, with a 20% filter on that as their, uh, like, grading system with an 88.9. Um, so, and then when you get into kind of some of the advanced stats and whatnot, the, the yards per attempt, 5.2, that's good for number set for seventh overall with the 20% filter, nine touchdowns that's tied for ninth, zero fumbles for Tony P, uh, yards after contact, 737, that's good for 10th, uh, yards after contact per attempt, 3.82, that's good for number dos. It. Can the yak be yards after contact or is just yards after the catch? I mean, do whatever you want. <laughs> Missed tackles forced 41. That's good for 15th. 10 plus uh, yard runs 31. Uh, so tied for six there. 15 yard runs, uh, designed runs 17, tied for third. Breakaway percentage 43.7. That's good for third. Uh, 46 fourth downs, uh, first downs. Uh, that's uh, good for 20th overall. Zeke had 52 uh, first downs. That's, that's good for 10th. So. Tony potentially taking over some of those. We did see Tony Pollard end that in his season with the uh, fracture in the Niner game there, which definitely changed a little bit of the dynamic of that game. Um, and then his targets, 50 targets, 39 receptions, uh, 1.55 yards per route run, only one drop and 371 more yards to add to his total. So pretty efficient in what he does and showing that he is explosive. He's just turned 26. Just? Um and and uh, Simmons is old. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are what do you guys? How do you guys feel about uh, Tony Pollard coming into uh, this season here? Is he is he a a buy a sell a fade a must acquire? What what are your feelings on on Tony Pollard here? Big D, you go first. Uh, my feelings on Tony Pollard is it's the offensive line is 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 solid. So I think you put most running backs behind that offensive line, he's going to do just fine. Um, from a dynasty perspective, I'm, I'm not high on Pollard for, you know, this year, sure. Next year, I'm not sure um, type of type of feeling on him. So um, will he produce? Will he um, perform at an RB1, you know, in the top 12 uh, level? I, he has the potential just because of that offensive line. Um, I, I don't know if he will or not, but that's that's kind of my like uh, initial gut reaction with Pollard going into this year. So he's right now in the FFD ADP. He's RB14 going 5-4. Um, Austin, what are your thoughts? I put out content on him actually relatively recently. Um, I saw he was going as the RB7 in redraft format. Um, of course, I'm significantly higher on him in redraft compared to Dynasty. You, sure. know, you mentioned the age, 26. All in all, like I've always liked Pollard. He's a good player. Uh, I like the fact that he's a big back. Um, very, very high on measurables. Like I, I, I like analytics. I like numbers. I have always valued, you know, measurables. Probably yeah. more than most people. It's just it's important, especially in this league. You know, you're playing against the best players in the world. You got you got to hold up, man. Like that's one of the reasons I'm not bigger on a chain. Feels so good when he pounds. jokes. Like you need to drink like seven milkshakes and then talk to me. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, Tony, Tony P is like six foot two twenty. Like he's just a big back. I I think he's one of the easiest fades in Dynasty mm. redraft. I'm I'm just probably 
avoiding him as well. Like I mentioned, I saw he was RB7. And it's just it's just too early, man. Like there were better players, there were better values. And and I'm someone who's always got the mindset of draft for value and trade for need, right? So if, if there's a better receiver there, but you really need a running back, you, you take that receiver ten times out of ten and then you make a trade before the season begins, you know. You you always gotta capitalize on value. Um that that's just kind of my philosophy, my thought process. All right. Well before we get into a little some players around him and talking about it real quick, um it's interesting because Zeke had so many of those attempts in that offense last year um, and they're, they're kind of vacated. Um, and, and right now we have, you know, Malik Davis, Deuce Vaughn, uh, Rico Dowdle, and, and they signed Rojo in the Rojo, offseason. Baby. Um, so, you know, it's not a, it's not a, they don't really have that Zeke style player in this offense right now. I do think they will sign somebody. They Zeke. have, they have cap room. Um, they have, uh, I believe it's 12 million in cap it's it's you know, probably it's, burning a hole in jerry's it's it's pretty decent pocket pollard's on a one-year deal they're giving him 10 million we're not really sure if that'll turn into a longer deal or not um maybe that's where that money should go it feels like it could be a zeke the reunion. one year thing is sure it feels like it could be a zeke reunion yeah. in there pretty Fill it up again. pretty easy for you know a couple million and we bring zeke back he's familiar with everything that's going on there it makes some sense and i think at that point pollard would overtake zeke in the overall attempts but you get you get kind of a thunder lightning approach. You get a bigger guy who can grind some stuff out. You can hand him and, and hopefully Tony doesn't wear down. The other thing is, is you do have a late injury with Pollard. Um, and when you're coming where he's not even quite back yet, and they're hoping that they will get him back fairly soon. Um, but when you have injuries like that, you could see some soft tissue stuff pop up early in the season because you're coming off of a pretty decent e injury late in the season. And, and when you're, I've had some pretty bad injuries. And when you come back from those things, you know, especially if you're if you're putting a high workload on it, you know, it's all of a sudden your calf or your hamstring or your groin or, or something just bothering you a little bit. So it feels like they need to add something in there right now. I think Malik Davis is a, is a nice little add to the backfield. I don't necessarily trust Deuce Vaughn a whole lot. Um, Rico Daddles fine, but uh, they do have a, 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 a fullback that they brought in from North Dakota State or South. I think it's North Dakota State. Uh, Hunter Lipke, uh, who is pretty interesting here reading through the Cowboys stuff. They kind of have him pegged as maybe being a little bit in the uh, use check role kind of deal. Fullbacks making a little comeback here in the league where you can be a little bit more multiple and he could be one of those guys if they don't bring somebody in who can bang a little bit for him because he can he can kind of play a little bit of running back. He can be your fullback. He can kind of go out wide, catch you a couple of balls. Um, so uh, he's just an it was an interesting name there that if they didn't bring somebody else in to, to keep your eye, I don't know if it'll be fantasy. It won't be fantasy relevant, but could be a good thing for the Cowboys to just bring have that bigger guy in the fold uh, and also use him as a fullback uh, in with Tony Pollard, uh, you know, much like the 49ers. This is an imitation league and, you know, McCarthy's kind of a West Coast-ish guy. Uh, so interesting there. So with all that said, I I'm still very much in on, on Tony Pollard. I think the volume will be there. I think he's a good player. We don't know exactly where he's going to be long term, um, but we can see that he was he's been very efficient. The uh, efficiency guys and the explosion guys oh. have been pounding the table for like three fucking years. They finally get it. Um, he proved me wrong because I thought he needed to be a little bit more of a compliment. But I, I he I now see he can be a one A, but I do think he needs a Robin uh, to take a little bit of the pounding uh, kind of off of him. I would love to see him get more targets um, and, and and, you know, catch more like 50 balls this year. Uh, but uh, I think. Overall, the offense is a pretty pretty decent upgrade for the Cowboys this year from what they were working with last year. All right, so you mentioned that you think Tony Pollard's too early. Uh, would you would you rather have Austin Eckler all day? What are we even uh, talking about? Yeah, yeah man, yeah, absolutely. I feel very confident with that. How about Ramondre Stevenson? It's easy. I, I would prefer Ramondre. I'm a big fan of Ramondre. Same. I'm 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 both of those guys. Big D. Yeah. Ditto. Echo. 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 On both? <laughs> see, see. On both, It's man. too easy. Yep. Go harder. What? Nick Chubb. That's De a Devontae Adams. Devontae? I think I could get better than Tony Pollard for Devontae Adams. No way. There's too many question marks right now. With Devontae? Other than him being one of the best wide receivers in the Other game? Other than the quarterback right now isn't even practicing. Who, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah. What's Jimmy new? Jay. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Adams for me. I, yeah, that one is pretty. Pre uh, Paul, Pollard's pretty low on my board, so you'd have to you'd have to dig well, in. We'll, the, in we'll the get there then. We'll more. get there then. Austin. Yeah, I agree. I'd prefer Devontae Adams. All right, let's throw let's throw a tight end in there. We're talking tight end premium always on this show. Uh, so Dallas Goddard or Tony Pollard, NFC East. We're driving ratings here. LeBron James, uh, you know, what do you think? Big D. Yo, oh, I was going to say, it's easy for me. It's Goddard all day. Hmm. And twice on Sunday because hmm. of the matchups. <laughs> That I think it's I see I think this is a better question I think it's closer. Okay. Um, I would probably of course lean Goddard just because of the fact that it's tight end premium. Had it not been, sure. I, I would go I would go Tony Tony, P, Tony Montana. Yeah. I Tony think I mostly agree. It kind of depends on how my build's going a little bit there. Dick Chubb, you mentioned him. Thoughts? What are we thinking here, Chubb or I gotta uh, go Pollard. Goddard all day for for Goddard Goddard over over Pollard, but. I I prefer Chubb over uh, Tony Pollard, hundred percent. Yep. Dude, what did he drop? 1,500 rushing yards this year. He's he's a monster, dude. He's like squatting over 600. I mean, when when I think of like the epitome of a perfect, just solid, good running back, like pure runner, it's Nick Chubb. All right. So how about Quentin Johnston or Addison? Both. QJ. Can you get? Can you? Can you get? A one six, one seven, one eight for I think you could try I think Tony you could get one eight for Tony Pollard if if somebody needs to. I'm down to do that. I'll take whoever and get it one eight for Tony Pollard. So you'd take Addison and Quentin Johnson over Pollard? Yeah, I would. Both uh, dude, I, I thought it was really telling that the Chargers took him he was a second wide out off the board. He God, he, I love his measurables. He had good production. He he's a good player, he's a good prospect. He's someone I'm willing to put put the chips in on. All right, two more running backs. We'll go Javante Williams or Tony Pollard. That's a good one. How are we feeling about that knee? I'm taking Tony Pollard, as the chefs would say. All day? All day. I'd have I to, think I'd have to agree with that. that dude, that's tough, man. It's, no, it's, Javante it's, for wild. Me. it's wild how much Javante's dropped in a year. Like he was well, it's, a yeah, you just... Round pick. You get a bad, a, a not not a super clean ACL potentially, and some people wary of the running back position already. It's just going to drive your price and down. I hate like Russell Wilson and the Broncos. I like the price of Javante right now, but I'm taking Tony Pollard. You said you said Javante, Big D. Yeah, Javante for me. I I um I I understand the risk risk there. So, but I I think there's a risk with Pollard too. He may produce outproduce Williams this year, but um I think. Williams has the chance to capitalize on value in the long run, mm -hmm. and uh, and and he's a better running back in my opinion. So I, I that's where I'd go. I, right. I'm not taking either one of them, motherfuckers. All right, uh, J.K. Dobbins and mm, Jameson Williams, both of those over over Pollard, or where are we at there? Definitely Jameson Williams. If I could trade Tony Pollard for Jameson Williams, sold. All right. I heard you guys going off about JMO recently, and uh, you guys are definitely more bullish on him. Um, I, I don't doubt the talent for, for a second. He had an unreal draft cap. Um, I mean, dude, he, he's so much fun to watch. Like, you go throw no cap, brother. No cap. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> <laughs> what does yeah, that mean? Uh, no ceiling? No, I, no lies. No lies. I'd probably, I'd probably lean JMO too, but I, I know you guys You guys seem like you're infatuated with him. And you guys said something that was so true, man. It was like, if JMO just has one big play, this season like his value is just gonna skyrocket and, yeah. and it's already too late like you can't trade for it at yeah. that point it's, it's over you know i agree uh big d yeah i think the the dobbins one so probably the closest for me so far um i'm i'm not sure where i'm at with dobbins but not because of dobbins because of how i feel about that ravens offense and what what i think it's going to change into um in comparison to what it was but i think i think that's a coin flip for me i i'd, I'd probably go you know, if I had 11 drafts, probably six of them towards Pollard. All right. I, I think I got to take – I I, I want to take J.K. Dobbins because I'm in on J.K. Dobbins increasing his value after the season starts because I think it's probably going to go well for the Ravens if he's healthy and starts off pretty well. I think there's a bump in J.K. Dobbins. Like, if, you're, if you have him right now, he should probably be a hold until – season starts and then you could probably get out from jk dobbins and get you what like a legitimate first next year yeah but if you could do that now with tony pollard then i'm down to do that too so i don't know which one i'd rather have i think i think
think I think J.K. Dobbins. All right. Well, I saw that uh, Abbott just threw out uh, some love on Pickens. It seems so. Pickens or Tony Pollard. I'm not even as crazy on Pickens as I probably seem from from whatever posts, but I, I would prefer Pickens. Um, he is a promising prospect. You know, he uh, dude. When, when I dug into him. I did not realize that he had 35% of his games. He was a wide receiver too. And that was the same amount as Garrett Wilson. I was like, holy crap. That kind of, that kind of blew my mind. But he didn't have one top 10 finish, which was also kind of bizarre because I feel like the media portrays an image of George Pickens as boom or bust. And it's like, did he really boom at all? He, he didn't have a single top 10 finish. But those same, highlights. I know. I, I know. You're 100% right. Those highlights, highlights. Boom, baby. Yeah. Boom. Like yeah, he had a bigger I, game than he did. Right, I just meant like in terms of like 30, 35 right, right. Yeah. performances. But um, yeah, like the media just kind of portrayed an image that just wasn't accurate, it felt like, or at least Twitter, whoever it may be. But um, uh, yeah, I like I like Pickens. I, w- I would prefer him over Tony P. Yeah, we need to talk about that Kenny Pickens. Pe- Kenny Pickett slander, but that's for another, uh, that's for another <laughs> podcast. Um, <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving here in the, to get out of America's Pickens, team let's here. Go. Um, we'll go. We'll jump to the receivers real quick. We'll go down CD. He's wide receiver. Uh, he was wide receiver five last year. Three hundred one point six points last year. Seventeen point seven points per game. That's good for number seven. And our ADP right now, he's twelve overall. Wide receiver three. Anybody have any real problems with that? Nope, he's good. <laughs> he's <laughs> I, good I think I, I would agree. Uh, Big D. I'm not. I don't know. I don't think I've ever talked to you about CD Lamb. So how do you feel about CD? I feel like I was really high, or I've been really high on CD for the last couple of years, and I'm really nervous this year for some reason. Hmm. I, you know, I think the changes that you kind of outlined and my drop in confidence on Dak makes makes me a little bit nervous for him. But but the player himself, I mean, my gut feeling is he's you know he's he's locked and loaded as is top five wide receiver, and I think I think he'll be okay. But it. it so if you asked me last year, hands down, you know, I'm, I'm all over Lamb. This year, I'm, I'm a little bit more hesitant, but still still a little bullish. And that, that's because of the offensive coordinator change and some... Mm-hmm. And the talent at the wide receiver two position. Deeper. You know, like, it's it's a little deeper. Gallup I think should this, be healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the scheme will be a little different. Um, I, you know, um, he so needs some I just, help out there, I think. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right? I yeah, that's I, good I, I do Dad. too. AJ Brown or CD for you? Uh, that's too easy. Big D. It's really close. I, yeah. I'm. I, I'd probably lean CD um, just yeah. because of some of the injury concerns, but same. Um, from the past, but age too. Yeah. I same. mean, you getting like what three years? Austin, do you, would you take CD locked in at three for you? Yeah, I'd go CD, but by a hair. I mean, yeah. those two players are just like it's like one A, one B. They're they're both awesome. Agreed. And and I, I could read all the stats for CD, but they're all really good. He's up at the top in a lot of them. 1,100 um, is the over-under on the, the prop bets. Uh, they have 1,100 and a half. And it's, for, okay. it's pretty... For CD Lamb? Yeah, yeah, for CD Lamb on DraftKings, he's at 1,100 and a half. It's even money, basically, on both. So it's minus 110 on the over or the under. So they're they're not confident either way. Um, if he's healthy, he should hit that. But yeah. uh, you know, that's a big if. You know, not not a lot of not a lot of guys are playing 17 games a year, and they don't have uh, injury clauses in these bets you're making, right? <laughs> no, <Yep>. they do not. <laughs> um, all right, fire them up, baby. I'll take the over. I know I always take the over, but let me get over through 1,100 yards. Let's so, see yeah, sure, sure. So the interesting thing I think was something that Big D pointed out: um, 65 percent, 62.5 percent in the slot for CD Lamb, 36.2 percent out wide. Cooks comes in. Uh, I think one of the bigger additions for the Cowboys is Brandon Cooks. Um, he's playing 74 percent out wide, so he can he can lock you in out wide, and then Gallup, who was clearly still struggling from that late season injury last year. Uh, he's going to come back. I think he's going to be fully healthy. I really like Gallup's ADP, and I love drafting Gallup super late. Uh, 92.1% out wide. So you're going to get some flexibility of CD being able to stay in that slot, be comfortable in the slot. He's so good in the slot. And you can kind of move him and Cooks back and forth a little bit, leave Gallup out wide. He's going to give you that boundary X receiver that you can just leave out there and do your dirty work, get him one-on-one, toss it up to him, and be fine. Uh, so I actually kind of like 
that they've gotten so much deeper at wide receiver because last year it was, you know, Schultz was number two on the team in targets with 86. Gallup was actually number three limping around out there in 14 games with 72. And Noah Brown was 70. So, and then Pollard and Zeke were the next or Pollard was was the fifth guy. So, you know, I think that's really, really could help this offense kind of take another step and be. Uh, a bit more of a problem to just have so much more to guard uh, and then if again if that offensive line can kind of stay healthy um, Gallup has has been a favorite of mine in the FFD drafts um, grabbing him you know pretty late um, in these uh, drafts right here I had the ADP in front of me but I don't have it right this second 1611 uh, wide receiver 68 um, I think there's return on investments. There's been plenty of times when him and Dak are both healthy that Dak has really, really targeted uh, some Gallup. So for me, for a cheap veteran receiver, he's definitely been one of my favorite. And Brandon Cooks at, at 13, one wide receiver, 54. All, you know, I would like one of those two guys uh, on my team uh, when I'm drafting uh, both. I think good values. Any, anybody opposed to Gallup or Cooks? How much would it surprise you if Gallup had a better season than Brandon Cooks? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. I, I, I fully agree. I was just very surprised. Cause it's so funny that you, you brought those two guys up. I was looking at their ADP the other day, and I noticed it was like a, what was it, almost a 20 or 15 receivers in between one another. I was like, that just did not feel right to me. I felt like Gallup was being slept on. He's probably a hell of a value based off his ADP right now. Yeah, for us, it's 14 receivers difference. And I, yeah. I do. I agree. I usually am taking Gallup 16, 11 over Cooks at the 13th. So I mostly agree, but I'm not I wouldn't shy away from Cooks. I think you could get, you know, good, uh, good games from all around. Big D thoughts. Yeah, I think you guys covered it. I mean, they're they're both targets at latent drafts they are both targets for me. Uh, post draft, you know, just kind of adding to my adding to yeah. my bench spots and and you know looking competitor, looking for some um, some depth that uh, could potentially outproduce whatever you're gonna have to trade for them. I, I think they're 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 locked in. I yeah. like that sixteen eleven Gallup, but I'm not really interested in the thirteen one Brandon Cooks. I mean, let me get Darnell Mooney all day. Let me get Damian Harris or R- Wandale. Let me get Wandale Robinson. Yeah, I'm fine with I'm fine with that. It's it's more so Me, Rondale Moore. When you're I'm taking, trying to, I'm when, not trying to do that there. When you're taking, I think Wandale's a little bit behind him. Sure, in sure. the ADP. I'm just saying, yeah, so Wandale's could, down there at thirteen nine. I think you can still get both. I, I think for Cooks, for me, when I'm drafting him, it's because I have I, I want to try to lock in another veteran that I feel decent about at that point, and I have enough of the younger guys that I feel. Uh, are going to be worth trade value or moving around typically in the draft I, I agree with what austin said i'm gonna i'm gonna draft for value and trade for need uh, but there does come points in drafts where i'm like all right yeah i'll take tyler lockett because i know if, if this team's winning um i'm, I'm okay with that uh, depending on on kind of who's around there so all right let's um let's get out of the cowboys here um real quick some key additions uh, for the Cowboys, I mentioned it. I thought Brandon Cooks were. I think uh, Stephon Gilmore was. I think re-signing Cooper Rush uh, were all good signings for them. Drafting Mazzie Smith in the first round because they need a little help on that defensive tackle range. They re-signed a bunch of guys um, in the offseason that were key players for them to one, two-year deals. Um, so um, I really like that. And so over under nine and a half wins for the Cowboys, uh, big D. Um, I'll take the, I'll take nine. So I guess I'm under Austin. Oh man. I feel like, I feel like this is a recipe for disaster betting on the Cowboys, but I would probably give them 10 wins. I could see them going 10 and seven this year. I'll take the over. I'm going down. I, I can't. I can't. Man, I can't even root for the Cowboys. They were 12 and five last year. I think they're improved. So I think it's an over for me. 12 and five. Yeah, That's such a good record with Dak missing five games. Uh, yeah, so I'll well, go. but they had Stephon, Cooper Rush screaming for Dak's head. Yeah, Stephon Gilmore was probably the best player on the Indian, Indianapolis Colts last year, and like I get that he's going to be what 32. He's older, but. Man, he was so darn good last year, and they just stole him from Indianapolis. So I, I thought that was one of their better additions this year. Yeah, I would agree. 
All right. Well, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Uh, and be sure to uh, catch all the rest of the division teams. Like I said, Austin's going to give you the uh, Washington Commanders. Big D's going to give you the G-Men. And yours truly. Eggles. Yeson Wayne is going to give you the uh, Eggles. Dwayne Wayne. <laughs> the Eggles. Put the birds in the bowl. All right. We'll catch you next time.